Hello everyone. I'm going to show you the basics of Fusion 360 and basically how to navigate through this software to be able to make something in 3D hopefully. If you at any point in the video think I'm going too fast or need something repeated, please pause the video or rewind at your own pace. So first we're going to talk about the very basics and that is opening the software here. This is the home page and this is what you'll see. The first thing I suggest doing before you start anything is creating a new project. So this kind of organizes your folders and your files and it'll help you later on when you're building a bunch of different 3D structures online. So for the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to call this project tutorial and I'm going to click enter. It's going to create a project here. Oh look, I've already had a tutorial folder. So to enter this project, all I do is double click on the project and it'll take me to the project page. Notice how you could see the home page and tutorial. From here, I'm going to create a new folder and I could call it whatever I want. For the sake of this video, I'm just going to call it uh, tutorial one. And I'm going to double click on tutorial one to go into that folder. And this is where I could create my project tutorial one. So the next thing you need to learn about basically any 3D design software or anything virtual and as a matter of fact is how to how to move around in it. So these buttons down here are basically your view buttons. They should be down here automatically. If not, uh, you could enable them by going. Oh, you can't really see it here. Go to file. View. And it should be one of these. View navigation panel and that'll bring up this thing. So the first view option is called orbit. And the way you could think about this is you could think about focusing on one object and orbiting around it, kind of like the moon does to the earth. So imagine this center point that I'm focusing on as earth and the camera as the moon. All I do is click on orbit, click where I want to orbit, hold down the left click and move around. So now I'm moving down. I can move up. I can move left. I can move right. I can move all kinds of directions that are orbiting that plane of origin. The next thing that's pretty useful in moving around is what's called a pan. So let's say I've built something along these four cubes, but I want to build something over here, these four cubes, but it's kind of far off. I can't just orbit and look at that plane. It's going to be kind of weird. There's a cool tool for you called pan. And what that will do is help you move left, right, up, or down. So now I could focus on these four cubes. You can also zoom in by clicking the zoom in and move the mouse in or out. Very useful tool. There are shortcuts for these. The orbit. All you do to do orbit manually once you click on an object is hold down shift and move the mouse around. You can also do the same thing by holding the mouse wheel three down if you have a mouse. Okay, so now that we know how to move around, let's talk about building an object. The first thing I need to do is before anything is to save this file so I could see it here. All right, so I'm going to go to file. Save. Ooh, not upload. File. Save. The shortcut is Control S and call it whatever I want to call. I'm going to call it Tutorial 1. Save. And now I can see it being uploaded and saved here in the corner. It also has the version number. So note every time you save and do any incremental changes, the version number will increase automatically. So you could always refer back to projects you've done in the past. Now that I've saved, the next thing I need to do is to create a component. And what a component is, is essentially a body chunk that you're going to have in your 3D build. 
And it's good to always start with building a component because when you get to more complex designs later on, you want to have multiple components so you could hide and see and move around things in certain ways. It all makes sense later on, but trust me, at the beginning, you want to start with creating a, a component. And the first way you do that is you go to create, new component, and you want to make sure this is an empty component. Uh, and just basically have all these features selected here. Don't worry too much about them for an introduction video. Um, everything else, like all these other options are advanced options for later on. Uh, besides the name, we could name it here. If not, that's, n that's no big deal. If you just click OK, it'll show up here. And you can just rename it here by double clicking. And we'll call it uh, Body. So another thing to note is this little dot called the Active Component. What this object here is, is my entire component. So everything put together. So if I have multiple bodies, which I could do here, create component, component two. So now I have a body and a component two, and I could select them individually. But if I select the top head and make this my active component by clicking on it, it'll select both my body and component two. With that being said, I don't need component two, so I'm just gonna right click and delete. And now I'm back to just focusing on body. Let's make this the active component, so this is the only component I'm working with. Okay, so there's a lot of way different ways to start a 3D build. Um, you could start by kind of using a form and molding it kind of like Play-Doh, that's a way you can draw it through sketches, that's another way. Or you could start with shapes and kind of form what you want. That's another way. The easiest way for me in this software and what I recommend for beginners is to always start with sketches, to draw something in 2D and then extrude it out into a 3D surface. The way we do that is go to create and go to create sketch. Now, as soon as you click create sketch, over here, it's going to ask you which plane do you want to create a sketch on. So if we move the orbiter around, we could see our three different planes of axes. And if you're confused on which plane you're looking at, there's a nifty view button here. So this is the top. And just by clicking on the top, I'm viewing the object from the top. If I move this around, I could see the back, I could see the right, I could see the front. And I could see the different axes. Oops, I didn't mean to select that. So let's finish the sketch. I'm just undoing here. You could view all the different axes here. So here's my x axis, here's my z axis, here's my y axis. So I want to build on the x y axis by looking at the top. Just by clicking on top, it's going to take me there. So I'm going to go to create, create sketch and select this plane. See how there's only one plane to select? Because I click top, I'm automatically looking at the Y plane and the X plane. So if I click here, I'm now in create sketch mode. You'll know if you're in create sketch mode because if you look here, it'll say sketch. And you'll have all these options for your sketch. For this example, I want to create a... Um, let's go with a... 24 well plate. So the first thing I need to do and what I recommend is having a reference image. So you always kind of want to think about how you want to draw your object before you actually go and draw your object. And the best way to do that is having a reference image. So if I just go to Google, which is over here, and type in 24 well plate uh image go to images i can see what a 24 well plate looks like so where's a good one here we go we could see that it kind of goes up and dips in here's another here's a better example of an image it kind of it starts as a solid block and it 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 kind of moves in a little continues up and then has our 24 well plates and it's arranged by four uh, going up and six across. 
Now, we could even get more specific than this if you if you really want to get a real life 24 well play onto Fusion 360, you could simply look at 24 well plate dimensions, right? Dimensions, right? And here we go. So we could figure out that this this 24 well plate for from Mattech is 85 by 127. And here's all the dimensions, here's the height, everything's in millimeters. Which is another thing to note. Fusion 360 is automatically in millimeter, in empirical. So, sorry if you're used to American units. You can change that by going here in document settings and changing the units to whatever you want. Um, so if you don't like millimeter, you can use meters, inches, feet, centimeters. But for the sake of the 3D printing world, leave it in millimeters. You'll thank me later. Anyway, I don't want to reference a real life 24 well plate. I'm just going to make a fake one from scratch. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to create, click on rectangle, and you have three different rectangle options. There's the two point rectangle to show you an example. All it is is I click somewhere on the grid and click somewhere else on the grid and it creates a rectangle for me there is if i go back to rectangle there's the three point rectangle which is the same thing as the two point rectangle except it uses three points so i could click here i could click here and then i could click here to kind of get uh, a rectangle that has some degree of rotation to it or what i'm going to actually use for this experiment oh this is a good time to show you how to delete so to delete, there's a keyboard shortcut to go backwards, which is control Z and it'll just undo what you've done. So control Z, just like any word file, PowerPoint, anything will undo things. It's again, control and Z. So don't be afraid to experiment. You could always undo what you've done. And if you forget that there's an undo button up here. So what I want to use is a centered rectangle. And what this basically means is I want to create a rectangle at a centered origin, which is what I want. So I'm going to click the origin, which is this uh, intersection here between the X and Y plane and see how it automatically snaps there. I'm going to click it and then I could drag my mouse around to kind of form my the base of my uh, 24 well plate. Notice how the numbers change. This gets pretty annoying if you want to go to an exact measurement. A cool trick is you could actually type in whatever number you want. So if I want to get to 85, instead of just kind of like inching my mouse closer to 85, I could just type in 85 on my keyboard and it'll lock that axis in to 85. So now only my length changes, but my height remains the same no matter what I do to my mouse. See how it's locked? You see that lock key? I could also lock both axes, both lengths, by hitting the tab button. And notice how the blue icon switched to the bottom, bottom area here. Now I could type in whatever I want there. I'm just going to type in 150, just for example sakes. And I'm going to hit enter. And now I have a rectangle that is 85 by 150 millimeters. So this is a 2D rectangle. Going back to orbit here, trying not to use shortcuts. This is a 2D rectangle. And I need to make this into 3D. How do I do that? Well, first we want to finish our sketch. We're done with the sketch. Next, if I hover over this square, I notice that I could select the entire square. So I'm just going to click it to where it's blue. That means that is the object I'm selecting. Then I'm going to go to create and extrude. The keyboard shortcut is E and trust me, you're going to want to memorize these shortcuts because the, at least extrude, memorize extrude and memorize sketch because you're going to be using them significantly throughout the entire 3D building process. So I'm going to click on extrude 
And what this basically is going to do is take my 2D object with fixed X and Y coordinates and give it a 3D object or 3D Z axis plane in whatever I want, whatever distance I want. And for this example, I'm going to go with 8. Uh, it doesn't have to be 8. I could even pull up and down if, I, if I'm not comfortable with that. I could go underneath. I could go on top. But for the sake of this example, I'm going to go 8 and click OK. And what that has done is took my 2D rectangle and made it to a 3D rectangular cube, which I'm going to use as the base for my 24 well plate. Okay, cool. Now I have the base. How do I continue from here? Well, I'm going to select the top surface, right? So it turns blue and I'm going to draw on it to continue my 3D build. So I'm going to click on it first and go to create sketch again under the solid tab create. And it's going to take me here. Now remember, you want to make sure you're drawing on the surface you clicked. If you accidentally clicked any other surface, you'll notice that the plane, your XY plane, is not on top. It might be on bottom, it might be sideways, and that's going to be the surface you're going to be drawing on. So make sure you click the top. Uh, yeah, just make sure you click the top, otherwise you're not going to be drawing on top. So now that I'm on top here, let's, let's click here. Let's pan it a little. Um, I need to draw another rectangle that's going to go kind of inside each other, right? So I need a rectangle inside a rectangle to kind of have that, that kind of incline that the 24 well plate had in our example image. And the way I'm going to do that is I could just literally click two point rectangle and it'll snap me to this corner. And I could drag it down and it'll snap me to this other corner. Notice how the dimensions are correct, 85 by 150. I just click and I have my rectangle again that I've originally had my sketch on. Fusion 360 is pretty cool that it recognizes whatever's underneath. So you could simply just draw your sketch to this. Now, what I want to do is kind of have a rectangle inside this rectangle. And there's a number of ways you could do that. I could just simply draw a rectangle inside this rectangle and call it a day. But I kind of want to be accurate, you know? What if I'm off by a millimeter here or there? It would kind of throw everything else off and I'm going to have to come back. So what I recommend doing is using another function called offset. So if I come up here and click offset, it's going to ask me which sketches, uh, which curves I want to select to be offsetted. So I'm going to click the rectangle here, and you'll see a blue line and a red line. The red line is indicative of where your new sketch is going to be drawn. So if I want the new rectangle to be offset on the outside, I could do that. If I want it to be offset on the inside, I could do that. And better yet, I could choose exactly how much I want it to be offset by. For this example, I'm going to choose 1. I want it to be offset by 1 inside. If I wanted it to be one outside, it's just negative one will be on the outside. But in this case, I want it inside by one. So now if I click OK, I have a rectangle inside my rectangle perfectly aligned. Correct? So from here, I'm done with my second sketch. I could click Finish, click this top surface. So it's only selecting this surface. If I zoom in, trying not to use shortcuts, again, I could just zoom in using the mouse wheel, but if I don't have a mouse wheel, I could click this zoom function, click and drag, pan over, and make sure that I am only selecting the inner uh, rectangle here. If I zoom out and pan, trying not to use shortcuts, <laughs> very hard, very challenging. Uh, I'm going to select the inner circle. And I'm going to use extrude. Again, that's create extrude or just hit E. And it's going to take me to the extruding menu. Now, I want to extrude this by another 8 to match the 8 that I've already extruded. Right? And that's going to give my, my second 3D body build of the little indent up for your 24 well plate. So... This little part, see how there's a little divot coming up? That's what I'm drawing. 
Okay. So now that I've done that, I could select the top. I could go back to creating another sketch. Oh, I'm off a little, so I should pan this over so it's centered. And now I have to make my holes. You might be wondering, do I have to draw all my holes? And the beginner answer is yes. <laughs> the advanced answer is no, you don't have to even think about it. But for the sake of the introductory tutorial, I'm going to show you how to draw your holes. So first, we're in sketch mode again, right? We're going to have to select, we're going to have to draw our sketch of the outer perimeter um, of the rectangle. So let's go to create, rectangle, two point, kind of, ooh, kind of uh, click a corner and drag it to the other corner to where it snaps in. Look at my dimensions, 83 by 148. Now there's a number of ways to do this. I could do math. I know that I need to fit four here, four circles here. So what is 83 divided by four? And that is the diameter of my circle, right? Um, since I don't want to do math in my head, just calculator function, 83 divided by four. And my circles need to be about 20.5 20, 20 in diameter. Um, what about lengthwise? I'm at 143. So 143 divided by 6 is 23.88. So I need a circle that's pretty much going to be between... Well, I could have space in the middle. If I just make it 20.5, uh, I'll, I'll have enough circles to fit everything. So that's what I'll do. I'm going to go to Create circles and it's going to give me a bunch of different objects for circles there is the two point and three point circle which work exactly like the rectangle where i just select a point and select another point and it gives me my circle there is the center diameter circle which works exactly like the rectangle in which it goes off a of center of origin so I just click a point and I drag the mouse wheel out and it'll give me a circle based off a circle with a diameter or circumference based off however big I want to by dragging the mouse. There's also something new called a tangential circle. And what that means is I select a existing sketch, two existing sketches or for the three tangential circle, three existing sketches, and my circle is constrained to those dimensions. So if I click tangential circle, select this plane, and select this plane, it'll draw a circle, and all I do is drag my mouse to kind of have the circumference be as big as I want, but no matter what, the circle is going to be touching those two planes. Now, if I were to do this, if I were to start here and use a tangential circle, if I drill a hole with this circumference, I'm going to show like walls here. It's going gonna, it's gonna to tear down my wall, if that makes sense, because I'm touching, touching the walls of my 24 well plate. So what I need to do is create another offset. So I'm going to go to create. Well, I'm going to go to offset and click the inner rectangle and make another offset that's inwards by a millimeter. So now I have an inner circle of my uh, top hemisphere, right? Now I'm going to go to create circle, circle, two tangential, and select the two tangential surfaces I'm looking at and have something that has a radius of whatever I need. So, just to be sure, if we want to do this the long way, <laughs> let's inspect to see how long this distance from this distance is. And I can do that by clicking the inspect button here and just measure this guy to this guy. And I'm at 81 millimeters, right? So, pulling, down our, pulling out our handy dandy calculator shows us that. 81 divided by 4 is 20.25. Okay, so one calculation is 20.25. What about from this wall? Ooh, 
Got to close it. Got to hit inspect again. What about from this wall to this wall? It's 146. So what's 146 divided by 6? 24.3. So I know my limiting factor is going to be the uh, up and down plane, right? And that's because I arbitrarily made a rectangle, whatever size. So I know I need to have a circle with a diameter that's no greater than 20 millimeters. So what I'm going to do is go to create, circle, tangential circle, and create a circle that's no bigger than 20 millimeters. Now remember, when I'm using a tangential circle, it's doing it by the radius. So a radius of 10 gives me a diameter of 20. So 10 is fine here, right? And you'll see that, it'll say radius 10. So this is a circle with a radius of 10. Now the next thing I could do is draw a line that's tangential to the surface here. And I could, there's a, there's a function for this as well. Uh, actually, let's do it even better. Let's zoom in a little. Ooh, <laughs> I'm all over the place. Sorry, I'm getting uh, getting this these shortcut commands mixed with another 3D software I use. Let's draw a line halfway through our plate. Uh, this is kind of in the way, so I'm going to use pan to move it here. Click line. Draw a line halfway through our plane, and you'll see why in a sec. It's going to be beautiful. And then let's do the same thing with the other side. Now, instead of drawing 24 circles, which is tedious, I could break this to where Fusion 360 has a cool feature in here called mirroring, where it's going to mirror what I do to whatever line segment I draw. So let's, let's show you that. Let's go to Create go all the way down to where it says mirror and it's going to bring this little mirror function box here the first thing is going to ask for objects so select whatever object you want to mirror in this case i want it to be the circle so i click on it to where it's blue then i move back over to the mirror line and select whatever mirror line i want in this case i'll select this line and look at that i have a free circle and i didn't have to do anything okay let's do that again Let's mirror this guy along this axis. So I want to circle over here. If I select the mirror line to be here, I can automatically see that my circle is going to be here. But the cool thing is I don't have to select one object. I can select multiple objects in one function. So now it's selecting both of these objects to be mirrored over here. Yay. And I, once I hit OK, I could see that four of my circles out of my 24 have been drawn for me. I got the four corners. Yay. So let's continue with this project. So the next thing I can do to kind of make things easier is, again, through my calculations, I know I'm going to have at least um, Point, point 0.25 uh, distance between my circles, between each circle, uh, which is why I kind of made it 20 instead of 20.25. So with that in mind, all I have to do is zoom in, click on the line, and you see how, you see how there's an X? So see how there's a cursor here, like it's a plus? But when I click on the circle, it turns into an X. That means the where I'm going to build a line is on the X. It's going to be connected to the X. So if I go down to, let's see if it'll show the midpoint. If I click on the midpoint and go and drag down, if I hold shift and drag down, it'll tell me exactly where I'm parallel to, right? So if I drag this to 10.25 and I oh, what, did I click rectangle? What happened? <laughs> Let's try that again. 
Ah, getting Blender confused with Fusion 360. Sorry, everyone. All right, let's try that again. Click line, click the midpoint of our circle, drag down, and type in 10.25. I will have a line that's basically the distance I need for my next circle. So if I click it, right, it'll it'll basically be the point I need to use for my next circle. So if I go to create rectangle, two point rectangle, I could just continue by clicking here. Oh wait, I'm not making a rectangle. What am I doing? I'm making a circle. Two point circle. If I hold this down, you see how it automatically makes a line? If I make the radius 20 and I click, I have my next circle. Yay, that's exactly what I wanted. Okay, let's drag this, let's orbit around. That's my next circle. Okay, so let's mirror this circle down here so I don't have to draw these lines and make a new circle. I just have to click a few buttons. I'm gonna go to create, mirror, select this circle, select this line, and there you go. I have four, I have basically a column done of 24 well plates. The next thing I have to do is basically go across my x-axis. Now, going back to math, uh, I know that I basically need 24.33 uh, to basically get six circles to fit across my entire x-axis but i don't have that luxury because i've already chosen a diameter of 20. so what i could do is type in 24.33 whatever minus 20 and that gives me 4.33 so that means i need to draw a line that's basically 4.33 greater then the center point of my uh, circle to the circumference of my circle, and that's going to be the next origin point for my next circle. So going back here, I could draw another line, click the center of origin here, drag it out, and type in, since my radius is 10, I could type in 10 as the starting point, and make this 10 point, what's, what's 10 plus 4.33? 14.33. And that is going to be the start of my next circle. So all I do is go to create, circle, two point circle, click the circle, and make sure the radius is 20, and make sure it's straight. You'll see, like, if it's not straight, if my second point isn't straight, there won't be a clear blue line. So if I go to where it kind of snaps, you'll see a, a nice blue line on the radius here. See it again right there? That's a perfectly straight circle so here's my circle right and then if we continue again if we draw another line and do the same thing just another line with 14.33 i could then create a another two point circle from here Make sure it's straight and lock it to a radius of 20. And that is my third circle. So I could keep this trend going, or I could use the handy dandy mirroring tool. So I'm just going to create a quadrant um, for this example to keep it simplistic. Uh, I suggest if you if you get advanced and you try this on your own, you could make multiple lines and just mirror everything across across your surface here if you're trying to make your own 24 well plate so i'm going to do the same thing down here just just another line here it's going to be 14.33 uh and it's going to be a straight line you see the parallel icon right there then i'm going to create a two point circle with a radius of 20 and wait until it snaps in blue. Then I'm going to make another line from here. That's 14.33. And make sure it's parallel. 
Then I'm going to create another circle, two point circle with a radius of 20 and make sure that that blue line appears so it's parallel and voila I have six circles here now I can go to create mirror select all six of these circles and mirror it on this line so now I have half of my plate done and click OK and I'm going to do the same thing I'm going to mirror all of these circles by holding down shift and clicking on them and clicking the mirror line and there we go I have 24 circles basically symmetric from each other voila so what do I do from here how do I make a hole for my 24 well plate well, that's where a handy dandy extrude function comes again. So, I know the sketch was long. Please pause and review what I've done. <laughs> uh, once you're ready, come back. Let's finish this sketch. So, all we'll see is this. And we're going to basically click a circle, hold down control, and click every circle uh, till the circle is complete, essentially. See how this isn't like fully complete? You need to make sure you select... Why is it not letting... There we go. Uh, make sure every full circle is selected. If not, you're going to have issues with this next step. So make sure it's a full circle, not a partial circle like we saw here. Uh, as long as you're holding down control, you shouldn't have an issue with this. So let's select all of our 24 wells. Go to our nice extrude shortcut. Or just hit E on your keyboard. And let's extrude this, not up, but down. So the negative. Now remember, we extruded it up by 8, and then we extruded it up by 8 again, making our total height 16. So if I make this, not positive 16, but negative 16, I'm drilling a hole through the entire well, and that's something I don't want. So let's make it something a little bit higher than that. Let's make it negative 14, or maybe even 13, and click OK. And there you go, 24 wells. Now what you might notice is that these are kind of spaced with more of a gap than these. And that's because my measurements weren't perfect, right? I didn't like, I just drew a random square with 85 to 150 and this is what I get for doing that. Um, if I went by the diagram found on here, uh, I probably would have gotten perfect circles, perfect shapes. Um, the next thing you could do to kind of make this look, I don't know, a bit fancier, I guess, is... Now, nah, we'll, we'll save that for a future tutorial. <laughs> but here's basically how to make a 24 well plate. So, yay. I'll end this uh, part one video because we're already at 38 minutes. <laughs> See you guys in the next one.